Now, onto the subject of bullying. Dancy Moeller is here with a local author who is working hard to curb this problem. Dancy? Well, bullying is a social issue that we have been hearing a lot about in recent years, and it's probably something that has been with us for centuries, but we're finally addressing the issue and addressing it head on. And joining me right now is Mike Terrian, who has written a book um, about the topic of bullying. And uh, Mike, I am so glad that you could be with us because there are a lot of questions, a lot of arguments that have formed over this entire issue. And um, I'm glad that you could be here to share your experiences. You have written a book called Charlie's Brand New Coat. Yes. You also have a formal initiative called I Will Be the One. Correct. So um, let's talk about why this topic is so near and dear to you. Uh, I was bullied from first grade through seventh grade as a young person. And, um, and it, you know, th over that time, there was a lot of pain that was created. And uh, you, they say that when you're a victim of bullying, you forget the stories, but you never forget the pain. And it was up till about three or four years ago that I was seeing more and more headline news on young people who were taking their lives uh, because they were bullied. And that pain would come back. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really wasn't sure why, but I just, I was angry all over again every time I saw it on the TV or I, I read it in the paper. And so I thought I could either be angry about it and do nothing, or I could, I could do something to help. And so I decided to uh, write a book about some of the events that happened to me so I could get that book into the, in, in the hands of young people. And uh, what I found along the way is I've been invited to several schools and community organizations to, to share my story. And so it's been great so far. That's wonderful. Can you describe or define the word bullying? I think that is where people get um, confused and argumentative about whether or not they've been bullied, whether they are the bully, whether their kids are, are suffering. How do you define it? I define bullying as the bully has a motive. He has an agenda. His agenda is to, is to seek and destroy. If it's, if it's either character, it's either morality, um, or the moral of young people, he has an agenda. Uh, I think a lot of us, as we talked earlier about, uh, we've been picked on and, and maybe we've had our feelings hurt and, and I understand that and I think a lot of people would say, yeah, I've, I've had that happen to me. But a true victim of, of bullying feels that pain. He feels that destruction. He feels as though the, the bully is really trying to destroy him. And it could be uh, mentally, emotionally, uh, now more than ever, it's, it's, it's more physical. Definitely. And as you said, some of this bullying can lead to serious consequences for the victim. Um, sometimes they feel hopeless enough where they feel like they're worth, their life isn't worth anything and they choose to end it. Um, how, how can we convince those who are being bullied that there is a brighter future for them and get beyond this? One thing, the, most, the best thing we can do is tell our young people that every single one of them have, has a brighter tomorrow. I ha and I, the reason why I know that is because of all the research that I've done and the people that I've talked to, I haven't found one person who said it didn't get better for them. I've talked to several hundreds of, of victims of bullying who said it got better. And so I'm confident that these young people who are going through their trials right now, uh, it will get better for them. And so I think as adults, we need to instigate that hope into our young people. We need to on purpose tell them that it will get better. I have to say though that, you know, our children are at school for a majority of their day and much of this happens right there in school. Are teachers equipped and, and ready and willing to step in and say, knock it off to the kids who are, who are doing the picking and the bullying? I think our teachers are equipped and ready. Uh, this is some of the feedback that I have received, um, again, with studying bullying in schools. The curriculum is so demanding. Um, it is, I, I've talked to several teachers who are just overwhelmed with everything that they have to do. And uh, I had one teacher specifically say for every, incident that happens at their school it takes an hour out of their day to do all the paperwork to do all the stuff that and i'm not i'm not saying good or bad either way i'm that's the information that i have received 
um, that, that the schools are just overwhelmed. They are just overwhelmed. And I hate to say this, but I've also heard where some of the teachers are the bullies too. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you how do you handle something like that when you're a, a fourth grader and you look up to this person as your mentor or your role model or, or authority figure, and they're the ones that are not being very nice? The, our teachers are our haven of hope. They are the place where we should go for safety. And um, as a young person, I had I had to have a place where I could go for safety. And I had one teacher in mind who was that haven of hope. She was there for me. But uh, as you said, I also had one teacher who, was, who, who did bully me. And for 45 minutes every day in class, he would make fun of me. And it destroyed me. And I failed the class. Um, I had no respect for him. I, had, it was very, I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to go to that class. I, I had no idea what was going to happen to me that day. I wanted no part of it. But as you said, though, you had one person that you could turn to, and that one person is a beacon of light, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and she knew my situation, even though I didn't think she knew it. And, and all it took was a pat on the back. Yes. It took an encouraging word. It took something. And you're right. All of a sudden, I had this glow that I was going to make it through that day because one person came to me and, and, and made me feel wanted, made me feel important. And you just have to believe that, that you are here for a reason. God loves you and puts you on this earth to fulfill a purpose. And you may not see it in the midst of the storm, but you will see it sooner mm -hmm. or later if you just hold on. So That's right. That's right. Um, where can we find your book and where can we reach you? Um, I have a website, www.iwillbethe1.com, and uh, you can purchase a book on, on my website. And uh, I live in Findlay, Ohio, okay. and I'm available to speak. Wonderful. Mike, thanks so very much for sharing your story and being brave enough to put it out there. Great. Thank you. All right. Back to you.